Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions, a program that provides a biblical perspective to the many issues of life we face every day. Many of the questions we address on this program have been sent in by you, the viewers at home. And I must admit, they are some challenging questions. Later in the program, we're going to be telling you how you can contact us with more of your questions. But here to address the questions we already have on hand is a panel of local ministers that we have assembled. And I'd like to introduce them to you right now. First is Pastor Bob Wardle of the New Life Assembly here in Lima, followed by Pastor Daniel Mester of Shawnee Alliance, also of Lima. Next is Pastor Ed Reinhardt of the Emmanuel Kettlersville and St. Peter's at New Bremen. And we follow that up with Pastor Shelley Stevenson of Christ Covenant Church of Bellefontaine, Ohio. We welcome all of you to the program today. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thank to you. have you with us. First up, an issue that just uh, will not go away ever since the Supreme Court decision of Roe versus Wade in 1973. This issue will not go away, abortion. And we see the landscape has been changing as more states are now changing the laws to outlaw abortion. I think, and I'm sure you probably agree, this is going to lead up, probably lead up to a decision that will have to come out of the U.S. Supreme Court. Conservatives, of course, hope that it will overturn uh, Roe versus Wade and we'll just have to see what happens. But how do we as clergy address this issue, lady and gentlemen? How do we uh, convey this to the audiences, to the, uh, to the parishioners and the like? What's the political versus spiritual talk that we need to have? Who wants to take that first? Everybody's just smiling at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, personally, I think one of the great tragedies, and we don't recognize this, and the media doesn't recognize this, is the aftermath of a woman that had an abortion. Yes, now, please understand, I know that there's women that celebrate that they did do that. Uh, I understand that. But having been both in professional therapy at one time as well as in the local church, I have dealt with so many women who have struggled with their decision to end the life of that child. And we never talk about that in our culture. And there are groups in different churches, and we had one at one time that had a support group essentially for women that went through that decision. There's no condemnation towards them because most of them, that if they have any faith in Christ Jesus, have come to understand his tremendous forgiveness and grace in their mm -hmm, life. Mm -hmm. And simply because at times, many who made that decision, they were misled. And for a long time, that was the message of our culture. They lied about what was really taking place. Well, you can't lie anymore when you can see a child so early in mm -hmm, the womb. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I think of the issue of abortion, and I think that what's coming, I, I celebrate it. I celebrate it as a church, but I celebrate it for Almighty God. Right? Understand, we've, we've aborted 68 million people. Yes, That's more than who died in World War II. And so I just see the tremendous change, and particularly for those women who need and understand that they want to have grace and mercy and forgiveness in life. So I'm celebrating what's taking place and it's going to divide our country but you know what those types of issues when you talk about life versus choice as they say uh, it will divide people but as believers we're on the side of life and Genesis yeah. chapter 1 is the establishment of life and God hasn't changed that. Pastor Stevenson? I think one of the important points that you made there is in dealing with those who come. It's not about the issue in that moment. It's about that person. And every case is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So my prayer for us as pastors is, Lord, help me with each individual that comes in in that moment where they're at. I don't want to think about the political aspect. It is what it is. And like you said, they are going to have to deal one way or another with what they're going through. So I really appreciate that. It's about the person. This is going to happen. And so people People aren't going to be able to have that choice. They are going to need um, a, a, an infusion, like you said, of knowing God's love and, and grace in that moment. So I really appreciate that you brought that out. Yeah, okay. I, I do think we need to be careful in in, in, the, in the question that talks about, you know, how are we? We're also who aren't we taking away the woman's right to her own body? And I think we have to be careful. <clears throat> Abortions are going to take place. Mm -hmm whether they take place in a medical facility or, or not. There, there's gonna be 
uh, people who choose not to have that child for whatever reason. Um, one did some statistic finding only 0.5% is due to rape, 0.5. Out of Point all five. the abortions, 0.5. Uh, 3% are because of fetal health issues. Um, and then 4% are done because of physical health problems of the actual woman herself. So we're, only, we're dealing with 7.5% seven, seven of all abortions fall into that category. Yet at the same time, do we legislate a total zero, 100%? That we, abortion is illegal completely. And I think we've got, wh where's the medical need in those situations? And, and, and th th that's an issue. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's, we, we can't just say 100%. I mean, I, I agree abortion's wrong. Don't get me wrong. But there are issues out there that medical needs. And when we start to really dig down into the facts, only 3 to 5% are actually, abortions are actually done in the hospital. The rest of it, the 95 to 97%, is done in private business, Planned Parenthood, et cetera, mm -hmm. abortion clinics. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and it's an industry. And so we have to be careful how we are dealing with this. We're dealing with an industry that is flawed, but there is also a medical side to it that, that does need help. We do need education. Mm -hmm. We do need an organization in it. Um, it when, when, when the government starts stepping in and legislating everybody's rights, <clears throat> when does it stop? Where do they I need mean, the help? Be, be specific, where, where is the help needed? In, in, in which in, way? Medically, you said medically they need help. Well, it, they need help. when you have 3% that have fetal health issues, mm -hmm. we, we don't know exactly what those problems are. And the statistic, it doesn't give us what is that issue. I see. And, and okay, now is it because the child is, is, is going to be a special needs child and I don't want to deal with a special need? We don't know that. We don't know that from the yeah, statistic. You're right, right. No, and if it's, that's the reason, that's a different question. Well, you, you wonder why, why not have the baby if you don't want the baby because it's a quote-unquote special needs baby, put it up for adoption or something of that nature, correct, correct. rather than take its life. But how so, do you differentiate between, you know, one, that's where I think it gets really mucky. Well, maybe it's a special need and has this issue, therefore they're in this category mm -hmm. and they have a special need here and they're, they have this issue. So how do you differentiate? I think that's where it becomes really hard, you know, to determine and and what, what, a, what a hard place to be in um, to be able to make that, that choice. And yet at the same time, you have the issue of government saying, okay, if it's a 0%, then where's this 95, where's these other ones gonna go? Mm -hmm. And is it gonna become a harder problem? Is it gonna be another life issue mm -hmm. um, where we cause another social ill? We, go, we don't, aren't doing it in facilities that have an understanding of what they're even doing even if it's right or wrong. Well, I think the church needs to address that issue, but we're looking at, you know, and this is the church's issue. The church really sure. needs to deal with this issue. This is, the, if the church doesn't deal with it, who's going to deal with Correct. it? Correct. So, go ahead. I'm gonna interrupt you. Yeah. What do you mean when the church needs to deal with it? Explain that to me. I, I, well, I, the need, th this I need is, to hear what that means. Okay, well, th this, this needs to be, the church needs to stand up against this because society isn't going to do this. Right. And so now we've got an issue of, it seems to me, what, what are the, you're, you're naming the statistics of, of, you know, special situations, but most of these situations are due to convenience. Correct. And so this Not is just, just because, so, so this is a spiritual issue mm -hmm. in which we need to address the gospel. Do you think sometimes this, the, the political aspects overshadows the spiritual aspect to the right. point where it's yes, difficult so for ministers like yourself to, has to, step to get into your situation? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And well, the church has to step in. Well, the whole effort of abortion since 1973, it was to remove the spiritual issue. Correct. Otherwise, it would have never happened. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. just, that's just a reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because our society continues to move away from any form of spirituality, and if yes. you claim any form of spirituality, you're labeled now. And so anytime, and even using your statistics, if you use those statistics, even in the church, well, then all of a sudden, you're faced with the spiritual issue of what are you going to do with these people? Mm -hmm. and, and I understand all the medical situation, but I also understand what life is and what mm -hmm. God says. And I can pull out Bible verse after Bible verse about why I am totally against abortion in every way. I mean, my, 
my niece is 17 years of age, Down syndrome, autistic in one person. Mm -hmm. All right. My sister-in-law was said, abort the child. She wasn't going to do that because for her it was life. And I think that's the message of the church is that we proclaim life. life. Yes. Yes. Boys yes. life. That's the message. Yes. It's life. I don't care and about that's the That's exactly what I mean by and the spirit, by the church has the responsibility because right. we are about life. Yes. That's right. Yes. And you know, the apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 12, or excuse me, 9, when he argued about the church, he said, the gospel is preached by winning. Now I understand the Roman culture. Mm -hmm. It was brutal. It mm -hmm. was hateful. People didn't matter. But he says, we win because we proclaim Christ. That's life. Mm -hmm. That's how we win this argument is we proclaim the life of God's child. Right, and life is in that womb. And this is, and this is, and science, these, these are, this is the group that is always proclaiming science is on their side. Science proves life in the womb. But the argument, as Pastor Dan said, well, is with life. Yeah, but one argument, the woman is saying that she has the right to control her own body. But that's not her body. <laughs> but that's been the argument since 1973. Sure, sure, sure. But I think we also have the responsibility of ministering life to that woman mm -hmm. who is, you know, going through that situation. What do you mean by that? And because in her mind, if she believes that she has the right to her own body and choices and she believes she has the right to abortion and comes to that place, obviously that's not maybe right thinking mm. or for a reason uh, she needs ministered to, she needs healed, she needs our attention also. So life to me comes in the form of the one who, who may think that her choices are being taken from her and she's doing something against her will to help her understand that's because she's not thinking right. She's not where she needs to be. Can we help you step into this life of truth, this life of belief and something bigger than the situation? I see that as being a huge ministry. Those who mm -hmm. maybe they think they're forced to abort, mm -hmm. then what are they going to go through in that anger? Well, she, so that life that, also She matters. may be forced to abort because she's thinking, I was raped and I have to carry this child to term. I, I, I didn't agree with this conception exactly. here. Um, and she needs ministered to. She needs life infused into her to understand. What does that mean specifically? How does that, how does that work when she says, she says that I, I, I don't want to I think we can teach them mine. that how important life is, what life, what life means, what it truly means. Mm -hmm. What is the true meaning of life? We can do that through the word of God where she may have a skewed idea of life. Obviously, if, if there's a life within that, you know, to her, um, she can discard or remove herself from, I feel like she needs the healing. Yeah. The other, I feel like the carrier of the, the child may need the ministry of healing also. The other side of the argument too is that even though she's raped and feels that she wants to abort that child, that we're making the child pay for what that, exactly. that, that raper did. We're right. making the child pay. And in cases where there's just recreational sex and the like, mm -hmm. we're making the child pay for the mistake that that couple made while they were recreating. You know, mm -hmm. and, but life is never a mistake. Life, life is never a mistake. And I think we can, we can infuse that truth into people and hopefully do it you know, in a way where healing takes place. Yeah. When you talked about the church, and I know this is a very private issue, but when the church does its job, yes. it creates a community. And as Paul would say in First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians chapter 1, my suffering was that I may now comfort you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if the church is doing its job, it understands the power of community to bring comfort. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've watched women go through this. It's the most horrible thing. Mm -hmm. I, it's so gut-wrenching. But you know, I come back to when Jesus died on that cross, he just didn't take away my sins. He also bore my sorrow. Yes. And people need to grasp that inner healing that yes. occurs through the power of the cross. And when you minister that, to minister that type of deep sorrow, that's so heart-wrenching and gut-wrenching, that what we're ultimately doing is, the, I think, the most powerful word in the New Testament. It's through, the preposition through, Christ Jesus. Yes. 
I, no one's going to get healing to a woman that experienced rape and mm. now making the decision, except Jesus. Right. right. And right. How exactly. is the church going to give her that? Exactly. Right. It's not we're going to lecture her, pull out a Bible verse. We're going to have her encounter the living Savior mm -hmm. community. who died for that rape. Absolutely. At that point, we're going to leave Amen. it right there. That's very well put. Um, we, we, we need more time to exhaust on this issue, but we have other issues to get to as well. We will be back in just a moment. We're going to tell you how you, the viewers, can send us your questions that you want us to deal with about life's issues right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back after a very sobering discussion about uh, abortion in, uh, in our society. Moving to another topic, that being the issue of mental health and mm. opioids and uh, how opioids have come on the scene and how the impact they're having on the mental health status of this country. Uh, Pastor Stevenson, you are, that's very much at your heart. How, how are yes. you dealing with this? It's, it's there, and I think for a long time the church has kind of maybe avoided the topic of mental mental health. Still that stigma. Still that stigma. You know, um, I probably 75% of my congregation has mental health issues or addiction issues. I see it circular. I see one following the other. So I think if we have to deal with one, we're going to have to deal with the other. The people that, that we deal with a lot of times, it's self-medicating. They know something's not right. They, they, they can't get over this depression, this anxiety. And so they begin to try to find things that will help take the edge off because a lot of them are Christians. They don't want to come to the church and say, you know what, I think I'm having issues here. I may mm -hmm. need to see a psychologist. Maybe I need to be on medication for this. So they try to find other ways. Next thing you know, it's not enough. And so it ultimately in our county, and like you said, nationwide, leads to heroin. Um, and, and we deal with that, but we must deal with the mental health also. But the church for so long has said, you know, get over it, get over your depression, get over your anxiety, you know, don't worry, don't fret. Um, and it, it turns them deeper in. So, so it is a very delicate, I think, topic in the church, but we have to admit that even as Christians, sometimes the depression can overtake, the anxiety can overtake. My thing is to deal with it medically, physically, but you have to deal with it spiritually also. If you negate one part of that, I think you can really lose that person and that's something none of us want to do. So it is, it, it's there and um, I want to be able to deal with it the best way I can and I, I need more wisdom in that area but I'm willing to press in to see, I'm, I'm really tired of losing people people um, to, to overdose and to addiction and I want to deal with the mental health to see if we can maybe level that out. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have a big job ahead because you, you've, you've, got to, you've got to stop society from stigmatizing yes, mental sir. health. Yes sir, absolutely. The you church, know? Yeah, yeah. you know, from, from that stigma. Mm -hmm. I want them to know they can come to the church and we are not just going to say get over it. You know, we don't say that to people with, with physical, um, you know, when they've been diagnosed with something physical like, like heart disease or, or cancer. It's just like, you know what, you stop thinking about it. Just, just jump over yeah. that hurdle. I think it's very unfair to those yeah. who seriously struggle with mental health. I heard somebody say once, jump in if you want, gentlemen. I heard somebody say once that um, unlike a physical ailment where you can see the person in the crutch and you know they're hurting, you know, you can see the cast on the arm, you know, they're hurting. But when it's on the inside and they're bleeding, Eating on the inside, yes, you can't sir. you can't see that. And they're, they're crying out for help, but you can't tell that, and um, that's that's a part of the problem, as much a part of the problem as anything else. Well, my thought about the church, I love the church, is that Jesus treated people holistically. All you have to do is look at the woman at the well. He didn't go after her. You're with the fifth man in your life. And we understand culturally why she had been married that time, because otherwise she would have made a living by being a prostitute. But he used her situation to help her find her need for him. Yes. That's the power mm. of the church. So I totally agree. There are a lot of people depressed out there, a lot of people with anxiety. 
uh, recently someone made a comment to me, thank you for streaming because I just struff, struggle with panic attacks. Yes, sir. My heart just broke for yes. us to be that trapped emotionally. And so I think it's the concept of what we think of the church. Mm. I think holistically. When I say that, I mean, I think God has called me to deal with every aspect of a person's life. Now, at the hub is their eternalness. I love bicycling. I do a lot of riding. Well, my front hub holds that bike together because everything spins on that. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And I think that's what we do. I think as the church, we need to address, like Jesus did the woman, well, you are living with a man. And so he got her attention. Well, we need to deal with if a person's depressed, it's okay. I mean, Elijah was depressed and God right. didn't throw him out, you know. Paul must have struggled with anxiety. Oh, he yes. talked about it. Yes. You know, you could go right around the room and talk about every one of those emotional issues. But people struggle how to have a relationship. People how yes. to go to work every day. How to, you know, deal with a boss. You see what I'm saying? Right. But at the center, we, we say Christ is the answer. Yes. But we address. We have to give skills. I mean... I always tell a couple that are getting married, you got three issues right up front. I don't care how long you've lived together. When you get married, it all changes. You say, I do. That means you're going to have to learn skills. Number two is that your personality, you're in love with each other, but I'm guaranteeing five years, you're not going to like each other that way. <laughs> I mean, you may be outgoing and he loves that, but five years, you're going to say, can't you be quiet? And then the other one is we all carry baggage. Every human being has baggage. So, and I say to these couples is that Christ is the center, but you must be real about the other yes. issues of your life. I think that's the church's it. fault. Mm. When we don't deal holistically with people, I think we do a disarm yes, to Yes, sir. Them. Real life, uh, I like that. I think, there's, there's so many hurting people. Uh, oh, some, like you said, the, the baggage. Some people have more baggage than American Airlines. That's you know right. That? That's right. And, 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 and it, it, isn't, it doesn't come out until the marriage starts mm. because they've been concealing it. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden it's there for that other spouse to have to deal with, to confront that spouse with it. Yes. And don't, don't, don't you think we need some teaching and training in the home as well to teach a husband how to love his wife, to teach a wife how to love a husband? Well, I think the church's issue is, the, as Pastor Dan was saying, trying to get them back to, to the healer, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes. We've got to point them to Christ. We can't, we can't just keep on dealing specifically. And this is what the church has been doing throughout the last at least a few decades now, is dealing specifically with one thing. And in the process, we're trying to find the answer for this mental issue or whatever the issue may be, just for that specific thing, instead of trying to bring them, addressing the specific thing, as Jesus did with the woman at the well, and showing them their need for Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we just fail as a church. We're not pointing them to Christ. Right. We're not bringing them back to the gospel. In fact, there's a lot of areas of discipleship. I'm sure we'll get into that later as we talk about the Bible. But I think that's what we need to do. We've got to get them back to the gospel, back to Christ. Mm -hmm. Because in him is life, mm -hmm. and life more abundantly. And, but, and, but, when, and, but when you're, feel, when you're broken, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'll speak from personal experience, when you're broken and, and you see yourself as sinner, is, and you see yourself as, as flawed, you don't go to church. Mm -hmm. So the church can't mm -hmm. stay inside the four walls and, and, and act like and go, okay, well, everything's fine in the church. Well, everybody's fine here. Mental health is outside the church. It's inside the church too, don't get me wrong, because some people come with the cloak and dagger and, and costume and the mask on and they come and it's all happy, but they go home and they're, they're depressed right. and, and they play the charade when they're in the church. Right, I agree. I'm but, just simply saying that, that Christ is the answer and the oh, church has the answer. I, I agree with that. Yeah. But we have a number of people in, outside the church who won't come, and they are distraught. They're trying to fill that void. They're trying to cover it up. I, from personal experience, I tried to cover it up with alcohol. By the age of 24, I was an alcoholic. Every night, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I contemplated my own suicide. Self-medication, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I didn't like who I was. I couldn't look at myself in a mirror. Mm -hmm. I, I shaved in the shower. I didn't, I didn't want to shave in a mirror. I didn't want to look at my face. I didn't want to see me. I hated me. Mm -hmm. And so when, when we come to the truth of who we are, yes. then we can actually start to grasp it. And then we can deal with our mental health. But until we can address that I don't like who I am, I don't like what's going on inside of me, we will never reach out for the help 
and get the help we really, really need, whether it's Jesus or anybody. And people can talk Jesus at you all they want. But until, that, until, the, until you inside are willing to be formed and changed, the, the issue of mental health doesn't get really solved because you, want to be able to, you have to be able to hear. And, and when, with mental health, it, it, you filter it through your own experience, everything that's said, and you, and you start discounting everything, but that's not for me. Jesus doesn't love me. My, I, my life isn't worth anything. And, and all, the, all the destructive thoughts take place and go on, and, and that's why we end up with suicide. Uh, individuals have run, they've, they've been But we hiding. still got to get them to Jesus. And we yes. do. Yes. We still got to get them to Jesus. We, well, I think the question is, when a person's in need like you're describing, what is the church doing to get outside the wall? Okay, mm-hmm. like I'm just gonna say, Shawnee yeah. Lines Church is involved with the Coleman Center. Yeah. All right. We we have a relationship there. What's that? It's a counseling center. We we're in, we're involved with another counseling center, a New Hope Christian Counseling Center. We directly help raise funds for them and everything because we want to communicate, but we have connections there. So when the Jesus time comes. Mm-hmm. They're going to say, hey, there's a church that does care. Are you all aware that suicide rates are going up yes. among oh, our young people? Oh, young. It's horrible. Young. It is it's horrible. also going up among our adults, and especially in the, and I'm going to bring up the dairy industry, because uh, that's what the affects. The dairy industry? What affects me. The small dairy farmers are, are, are struggling. Oh, are, really? Are, and if, if you get outside the city and you get into the rural country, the small family farms of 100, anywhere from 50 to 100 cows, they can't make it. The, 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 the milk prices dropped out, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we have segments in our society that, that we don't even recognize. We have industries in our society that, are, that individuals are suffering. Mm-hmm. And, and they're in our churches. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, I, 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 I pastor in two, in two rural communities, and, and two. it's there. Two. 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 And, and, and it's there, and it's, it, it's real. And, and we've had, uh, over the past 15, 20 years, there have been individuals that have, that have hung themselves. My uncle hung himself, mm-hmm. um, et, et cetera. Not from that community, but he, and he was a deacon in a church. Mm-hmm. There's a lot and, of and suffering, so, a lot of suffering So the mental there. health in the church, and we can't just brush it aside. We've got to know where our limit is as a pastor mm-hmm. of what, what counseling we can do and when they need additional help, mm-hmm. when the medication to help them cope in, is, is necessary, mm-hmm. and then how to, how to get off that when time comes. Process, it's journey. Are we willing, and we don't do discipleship like we should. Right. We don't walk alongside people. We tell them, okay, here it is, and we walk away. Right. Take two and, pills and, and call, call me in the morning. morning. Yeah. Yep. And, and are we there 24-7 for the person? Yes. Are, are, they, are they our top 10 that you have the right mm-hmm. to call me any moment, Absolutely. any day? Right. Right. And you know, let's face it, a pastor can't have that for all 100 people. Mm-hmm. You, you call, see me office hours. You you need, I'm there in a moment. And they've got to know that. It's that community feel. And I like what you said, Pastor Bob, because right now we have about three women that struggle with mental health, but they can still minister to others. Mm -hmm. They can still be productive members of society and the church. So now they are the ones that we're discipling. Christ first, the healing's coming. They're finally figuring out who they are in Christ. Just because they have the mental illness doesn't mean they can't do anything. They're the ones that are going out into the community Mm -hmm. because now they can minister regarding mental healing to others. That's the Discipleship is the key for the church. Amen. Discipleship is the key. That's what we're going to have to leave. Do you realize we're all out of time? (laughs) <laughs> Already? Very good Already, conversation. Yeah. Very good discussion. Questions. Appreciate you all and all the input that Thank you've you, given. Sir. That's our program for today. Um, uh, this fine panel will be back with us again next week as we tackle some more issues. Until then, I'm Bill Harris of Life Questions. We'll see you next week. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 
100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.